Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's free video tutorial where we're going to add snow to a cold, wintry photograph using nothing more than Adobe Photoshop. I already have this image open on screen. It's a PSD file called Snow on the Streets and contains this Photoshop manufactured weather just so you can get a grip of the effect that we're looking for here. And I will say at this early stage that even though I'm going to be talking you through all of the stages required to make this effect, it's important to know that we'll be using some filters that behave specific to the size of the photograph. So I'm going to press Control alt i here on the PC, that's Command-Option-I on the Mac, to open up the image size dialog box, and see that I'm working on a file that's 768 by 576 pixels. So if I'm working on a file that's larger or smaller than mine, then you may end up with snow that looks larger or smaller than mine as well, if indeed you follow my exact settings. So I definitely recommend that you follow along with the steps that I use, but feel free to try your own settings and values for snow that looks right for whatever image you're working with. Alright, I'm going to cancel out of here and start off by dragging this snow layer down to the trash can icon to delete it, and we're ready to make a start with our creation of snow. So first thing I'll do is come down here to the bottom of the layers palette and what I'm going to do here is alt click the new layer icon that's an option click on the Mac and I'm going to name it snow and then click OK. The next step is to fill the layer with white so now make sure you have white selected as your active foreground color if it's not then you can press D on the keyboard to switch the swatches down here to the default foreground and background colors and then press X on the keyboard to switch their places. Now go ahead and press Alt Delete on the PC, that's Option Delete on the Mac, to fill the layer with white, just like so. So far so good. Now to get the snow texture going, I'm gonna add the noise filter, but before I do that, I'm gonna switch the snow layer we've created to a smart object. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so that I can add dynamic filters to the smart object itself. And if you're working with Photoshop CS2 or earlier, then you won't need to switch it to a smart object simply because even though smart objects are available in CS2, smart filters are not, and that's what we're going to be adding to this smart object. So with the snow layer active, I'm going to come up here to the layers menu, and I'm going to select smart object, and I'm going to choose this option right here, convert to smart objects. So now we've converted that layer to a smart object. We can now go ahead and add the noise to the layer by coming up here to the filters menu, selecting the noise submenu, and then clicking on the add noise filter. That's going to bring up the noise dialog box and display a live preview via the image. Now feel free during any of these filters and settings that I'm adding here to change the settings that I'm inputting to any of your own values that better suit your image. Now of course the big advantage of using a smart object is that we can come back later and make changes to whatever settings we've entered. But I'll show you more on that later. For now go ahead and enter a noise value of 400%. Make sure we have Gaussian distribution and that monochromatic is active to ensure the noise contains no color whatsoever. Once I'm done I'll hit OK and you'll now be able to see the add noise filter is attached to the layer over here inside the layers palette it's actually attached to our smart object layer and if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop then you won't see the filter because the noise will actually be directly applied to the layer itself meaning that you can't come back and edit those settings later on in the project okay so let's press on I'm going to assume you know all about these smart objects and smart filters from now on, by the way, just so I don't end up repeating myself. We now need to beef up the snowflakes. I think there's no doubt about that. And we can do that by using another filter in Photoshop's arsenal. So follow me as I come back up here to the filters menu, select artistic, and then click on the cutout filter which opens up the filter gallery as it turns out, the big old filter gallery which I'll just make sure I have inside the screen capture area like so. Now try to ignore the colour of this effect for the time being, we'll address that later on. For now we just want to make sure that these snowflakes are the size we want them. To achieve that, with my image in mind, I'm going to use a value of 5 for levels 
and one for both edge simplicity and fidelity. And that looks pretty good, I think you'll agree. So I'll click OK to accept that change. Now let's try and drop out this neutral grey background and at the same time add a bit more punch to the snowflakes. And to do that I'm going to use a levels adjustment layer by coming down here to the little adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette and just giving that a click and then selecting levels. Now all we want to do is to expand the contrast of the layer so I'll start by dragging the white point slider until we remove the grey background say to a value of around about 150 maybe 148 looks just about perfect for this particular effect now to add that punch back into the snowflakes I'll drag the black point slider into the bulk of the brightness levels in the middle of the histogram here say until we get to a value of about 100 should do the trick and finally I'll reduce this gamma control in the middle here to a value of 0.4 just like so. And while I'm here I may as well plug my series on levels, I'm sure you've heard me talking about it before but just in case you haven't then if you go to the freephotoshop.com website then you'll have access to over five hours of free video training on the subject of levels an amazingly in-depth series that one so check it out if you want to know more but before I click OK inside the levels dialog box right here there's one more thing we can do. At the moment we have black snowflakes on a white background and we want things to be the other way round. Well we could use the invert command, we could press OK here and then use an invert adjustment layer but instead of that I'm going to achieve that effect right here inside the levels dialog box by just switching over these output value sliders just down here at the bottom of the levels dialog box so I'll move the white point slider across to where the black point was and the black point slider over to the white point or where the white point slider was and you can see we've completely inverted the colors inside the image just thanks to such a basic technique inside levels that of course is involved in the series that I did so again if you want to know more about how powerful this command is then check out that series on the freephotoshop.com website. Now we can go ahead and click OK. I think we're ready for that now. And we're almost there actually. We've just got a few more things to do. One of them being we need to drop out the black and leave just the white snowflakes. And if you've seen my lightning tutorial here at freephotoshop.com, you'll remember that we were in the same predicament when we created that bright lightning bolt against a solid black background. And the way we dealt with that situation is to use something called screen blending. So we'll go ahead and give that a try, seeing as we're in the same situation here. I'll target the actual layer in the layers palette called Snow, and I'll change the blending mode associated with that layer from Normal to Screen, and we get a pretty unexpected result. In fact, we get nothing like the effect we actually want, and that we actually got when working with the lightning effect. Well here's the reason why. When we were working with the lightning effect we were working with one layer which was fine. Now we're working with a more complicated layer structure which includes layers, smart objects, smart filters and then even adjustment layer at the top here. So you may be thinking that we could go ahead and switch out all of these layers and smart objects to the screen blending mode and that would do the trick. Well we could individually change things to screen for every last one of these layers but that wouldn't actually do the trick, that wouldn't get us the result we need. And the reason for that is that each layer would still be screening individually, which isn't the behavior we actually want to end up with. We could go ahead and flatten the adjustment layer, uh, we could flatten the smart object as well and the smart filters into one static layer, but that's going to present its own problems when we want to make some changes to the filters for example that affect the size of the snow, and if we flatten the image or the layer out, then we won't be able to modify them after that point. Well, what we need is a way to force Photoshop to blend these layers as a whole rather than individually. And as it happens, that's actually quite an easy thing to get Photoshop to do. And if you want me to show you how to achieve that and produce our final snow effect, then I'll invite you to join me in the second part of this video, available for free 
at the freephotoshop.com website. Well, thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com, and I'll see you in the second part of this tutorial. Music